Hi guys, I'm Stéphanie Magnani from Le Paris Café Festival. Hi, I'm Tom, co-founder of Coutume. We're in Paris. I'm really excited to be part of the Paris Coffee Tour. We're going to be showing you fantastic cafes over the course of the day as part of the Global Coffee City edition. Great, so let's go. So let's start with Coutume's flagship coffee. This is uh, Rue de Babylone in Paris, uh, 7th arrondissement. We're really in downtown, uh, authentic Paris. We started here in 2011, so this is where it all began. I'd love to show you around. We uh, have a little roaster out the back where Sammy's roasting, and uh, we should enjoy a couple of coffees and get to know each other. For the people around the world, why should they come and visit Kuchum? Uh, well, I think Kuchum has become a bit of a coffee pilgrimage over the years. Uh, we've definitely got a reputation for our coffee, the, the quality, the passion, the precision. It's really the the base of everything that we do. So your team just bring us some, some yeah. coffee? Can you maybe explain? Absolutely. This is uh, what we call the Trois Coutumes. Okay. So uh, we wanted to present one coffee in three forms uh, to really give a very uh, global uh, approach to understanding a terroir. Uh, we love uh, the intricacies of a, a single origin terroir, uh, which we will actively source and uh, create a profile to express its nuances and its identity. How do you see the coffee scene in Paris today? In every city that they travel throughout France, they can find a, more or less every city, they can find a, a decent coffee now. We were very confident because uh, the French are so passionate about gastronomy, wine, cheese, artisan, and craft. We, we knew that specialty coffee uh, made sense in this culture. Our next stop, Café Lustig. We are in the center of Paris, in the West Marais, on Rue Chapon. We're sort of in the, uh, you know, in the north western corner, so we're, uh, you know, between the Sentier and the Haut Marais. Yeah. So, ours in Métier, so we're, we're, uh, we're calling it now the West Marais. Okay. But there's a lot of, uh, you know, very good quality. Um, independently owned mm -hmm. businesses as well. Absolutely. We were one of the first. Yeah, you were. So definitely a founding member of this uh, new uh, community. We change all of our coffee every single week. So we normally have an espresso, uh, single origin, an espresso blend. Okay. And we have filters and we change whatever is in season with our roaster, which is Café Nation in Antwerp, mm -hmm. in Belgium. So uh, every week we'll see different coffee at, at Rustic. The thing that makes me the happiest, apart from people enjoying the coffee, is that quite literally here, people just turn their head and speak to their neighbour, yeah. and they get on and they meet people. And, uh, Fantastic. And that's, uh, you know, that's part yeah. of what I do. That's the spirit of coffee, absolutely. So we are now in the second uh, arrondissement at the Substance Café, owned by Joachim and Alexandrine. I'm really excited to go in and see what Joachim has been up to. It's a very recent project. Uh, Joachim has a uh, long career of competing in barista competitions and he's created a uh, spectacle uh, around the, the stage where the, the client uh, enjoys the, the ceremony of a very purest uh, vision of specialty coffee. So let's go in and check it out. For me, uh, coffee is not just a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. It's uh, maybe uh, a cup, but mm -hmm. an experience, um, a part of the nature, and a little bit of part of my herbs. And it's like my interpretation of the nature. If I don't like the coffee I serve for you, mm -hmm. we don't have the emotion. Yeah. And for me, the most important is a coffee with a lot of emotion. If it's possible to don't have any taste of roast, mm -hmm. but a good coffee with that, yeah. not just mm -hmm. a vegetable coffee, of course. Yes. It's my mission, but it's never finished. So, Tom, where are we now? We're on the Rue Amelot in the 11th, just about to go and check out Back in Black, mm -hmm. uh, inspired by ATDC, a group uh, yeah. close to my heart, my Australian heart. We should go check it out. Let's go. Let's go. We want all the space, completely plus for the customer. I like the kitchen, the roastery, the bar. The idea is on barista, we want to make great coffee. So for the roaster, it's the same. Yes. And kitchen, same. So they are making everything homemade. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the coffee that we're going to be drinking today? What do you recommend? Today uh, we drink uh, on V60 uh, Colombian coffee. Okay. So El Jardim, it's an anaerobic one. And normally one of our barista uh, uses this coffee for the French championship. But Okay, so now it's for us. <laughs> so this is the manufacturer.
l'ouverture du café euh, Alain Ducasse, the world-renowned chef, uh, who opened this own coffee roastery. They also have a chocolate roastery just around the corner, and I heard just earlier they're opening their own ice cream manufacturer, mm -hmm. bringing back some of the artisanat to the 11th uh, district. So I'm sure we've got some good surprises in, in line for us. Let's go in. Hello, Olivier. It's great to be at the manufacturer Alain Ducasse. Thank you for having us over. We're uh, very privileged to be inside the, uh, the roastery and uh, coffee tasting bar of Alain Ducasse. Uh, tell us a little bit about the story behind uh, the manufacturer Alain Ducasse. It's, uh, I mean, it's all about the product. It's, uh, so Ducasse had uh, this, this vision like 10 years ago that chefs could, uh, instead of only having restaurants, they could have manufacturers. So we opened uh, the chocolate manufacturer. Mm -hmm. it was, eight years ago. It's just around the corner if I'm not mistaken. Right across the street. It's, yeah. it's just there and there's, uh, there's another one for me uh, okay. and, and always the same mindset. So it's um, basically one product and we try to bring all the talents that we have inside the group because mm -hmm. we, have, we have a lot of uh, talented people in very different uh, occupations. We have pastry chefs, mm -hmm. chefs, sommeliers and maître d'hôtel and so we bring everybody around the table and we say, let's talk about coffee, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think this is what brings the, the uniqueness, the, this, this touch to, yeah. to the cafe, is that we try to remain chefs mm -hmm. when we are roasting coffee or doing the, the extraction. Of and uh, obviously this is a publicly accessible location. So what's the idea behind uh, a client who walks through the door? What are you wanting to, to uh, provide this client? Uh, rule number one was everything has to be transparent. From the windows mm -hmm. to the, the, the panels of the, the machines, la mm -hmm. has to be transparent. Yep. The silos, the cups, all the, all the, dr the drinks are served in a double wall glass mm -hmm. here. So you have to see the products. You're, okay. not, you're not only having uh, the, you know, those cups or those capsules mm. or whatever, you have to see the product. Even though there are uh, new waves into coffee and, and, and new generations that try to, to uh, treat coffee differently, uh, coffee has a five to six hundred years history, of course, and yeah. there's a there's a huge background. Mm -hmm. So almost everything here has a previous history mm -hmm. background. Uh, the shelves, the windows, yep. um, the, the the lights, everything is here has a has a story. So it's yes. either super modern, mm -hmm. so that we have the best product possible mm -hmm. in terms of roaster coffee machines, or the oldest possible. Yep because uh, we want to have a... Spanning over time. Exactly. It's kind of a tribute to, yeah. to people that have been working on coffee for exactly. more To where we've come from. Years, yeah, mm -hmm. before us. Mm -hmm.